All right, what up, everybody? The rap throwback. We're back. So we, uh, got Diz Mega in the house, Soundwave, and uh, man, how's it going? Man, back for another week. Yeah, back for another week, man. It's going good, man. Pretty cool week. Getting uh, through this summer. Getting yeah. looking at that fall. Yeah, man, it's uh, right around the corner, huh? Yeah, football season and kiddos going back to school. I do like football coming back. Oh, I know. Thank uh, God. I wish the uh, the warm weather would stick around, though, but whatever. Yeah, not that warm. Hope that global warming speeds up. Yeah, come on. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that is cool. Football's coming back. Yeah. Any drama going on with Raiders? Um, I don't know. They got a gay guy. That's about it. And apparently, they're oh, yeah. he's being treated just like everyone else. I'm like, so what else is new? I don't know. Yeah, I know. I don't really care. Why does it matter? Because social you justice know. warriors and hashtags, you know. Yeah. All that I bullshit that we didn't everyone's care trying about to, when we were yeah, kids. Everyone's trying to get their social score up you know yeah no doubt yeah uh no other drama though i'm surprised (laughs) there's always drama with the raider camp (laughs) yeah i think all the drama is with the broncos this year who's their quarterback yeah quarterback is uh definitely a problem but uh we'll see what happens you know as far as i can tell they're allegedly even in training camp so I'll be the judge of that when I watch him play today, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Hey, looking forward to it, man. Yeah. And, uh, on the yeah, rap that's front. about it, man. I haven't. Oh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say on the rap front, you know, we got NWA. Yeah. 33 year anniversary that's... for Straight Out of Compton. Damn. 33 years. That's crazy. Yeah. And last week we just did the tribute album, which is pretty dope. Yeah, man, that's uh, that's insane. That puts me at like nine years old when that album came out. Wow, that's it. <laughs> we yeah. like, and we were punks. It's crazy. Yeah, man, and I know we were listening to it. Gosh, <laughs> when we were about your boy's age, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? right? Nah, just kidding. Um, that was a Rumble, dude. Yeah, a little yell over there. That's cool. But uh. <laughs> yeah, man, we were just little young kids, man. I yeah. didn't even know. We didn't know shit. No, I remember like in uh, sixth grade, I heard Too Short. And I'm trying to think about earlier years in that. Like fourth like grade. Fifth grade, and fifth. I kind of remember Two Live Crew and Easy E being passed around. Yeah. Seventh grade is when shit popped off, though lockers yeah. and whatever you know sharing tapes yeah that was uh I remember i got early slick 90s. rick for sure in seventh grade mm-hmm. oh yeah that was like my favorite tape yeah it was crazy 33 years old for nwa man um that's crazy uh today it kind of goes with it because we're like talking about snoop who's like a baby of nwa for sure um, right, man. He's definitely a, a branch, you know, that yeah. was that came off of that team for sure. And these NWA guys, man, they were kids, man, because you think about it, 33 years ago, and they're not really that old, you know? I mean, right. Jeez. Anybody who's been doing something for 33 years should be gray and retired. But these NWA yeah, you guys think, are still right? out there doing their thing. So they were just punks, man. Kiddos. Just a little older than us. Which is kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, that would have been pretty crazy to be caught up in that, you know, that young, you know. Their their world was so much different than ours. Yeah. No, it's California Compton. Police brutality. Street reporters. Street. Mm-hmm. Nuts, man. I was uh, looking at some Easy e on youtube yesterday and uh we'll have to check this out and talk about it next time there's a a documentary about easy e's death and the mystery around it and i didn't know this was on on youtube um 
but it's like Easy E's daughter is kind of uh, direct in this whole thing. And yeah, just looking is that at all finished? The, I guess it's finished. I just started it and I was like, I'm not going to finish this, man. I'm going to have to watch it later in the week. Um, I knew she was working on it, but I didn't think it was done yet. I think it's done. Uh, wow. You know, and apparently they go through every conspiracy theory, um, which is kind of interesting, you know. And, you know, they just say the the same stuff that we were wondering about. I was like, how come nobody else got it? You know, none of his yeah. girlfriends, none of his kids got AIDS or nothing like that. And uh, it's crazy. Um, and then, uh, you know, so I, I saw that and Easy's daughter's looking good. I'm glad. Hopefully she can yeah. do something, you know, um, you know, be the other face of uh, Easy's legacy. You know, little easy does yeah. pretty good, but uh, he could he could get out there a little more, I think. Um, you know, with his rap career, anyways. But you know, it ain't easy getting a rap career. Uh, no pun intended. No pun intended, huh? <laughs> um, and then I saw, like, lately, I don't know why there's been like a shitload of these real motherfucking G reaction videos. They're hilarious, oh, really? man. Like, I saw these two kids. They're like in their parents' pantry watching like real motherfucking G's and reacting to it. And they're like asking questions like, damn, I think he's dissing Dre. And they're like, what did Dre do? And and like they don't know anything. And the girl's like, I, yeah. I watched the straight out of Compton movie and I think Dre tried to sign them. Or maybe they wanted to be signed by Dre. And he didn't sign them, so that's why they got beef. And I'm like, you kids, man, tag me in, man. I'm like, it's like tag team wrestling. Tag me in. I can get in here and school you guys. Yeah. You know, it's that's funny hilarious. shit. Yeah. So, you know, I watch those every now and then. It's like, what do these yeah. kids think about real motherfucking G's? Like, I want to do a reaction to reactions. And I'm like, nah, <laughs> that's too much work. <laughs> that's funny, still, man. I'm like, you know, I mean, I'll do a video that's like, to all the kids watching real motherfucking G's for the first time, click here. Well, it would be it would be fun to kind of you know take the uh, the ones that are so outrageous and just you know dissect them and yeah, yeah. no doubt, right? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Break them down, talk some shit. Yeah, it's like, do we need to make a video just schooling everybody on what happened? You know, jeez, I could. I, I don't know, educational, who knows. But those videos are hilarious, man. So, hey, you know that NWA legacy, 33 years later, still alive and kicking. And uh, people are still, uh, you know, checking out all that old shit. So I'm glad. But, you know, that's all I got on the rap front this week, man. Did you check out any of the King's Disease too? Not yet. How about you? I listened to the... The Death Row East track. That was interesting. Yeah, is it good? Cool. Yeah, it was good. It was, uh, you know, Nas's point of view from what happened really? up in uh, New York when they had that confrontation. and um, So it was good to hear, man. It was dropping some history. and uh, It's got some good... Some good... Uh, some insight good background some insight yeah on the whole situation that's cool man you almost forget that Nas. yeah you forget about that nas was there you know against tupac right yeah you do yeah i mean like they had a face-to-face confrontation yeah you know gangs and shit so yeah man got serious there for a while between those two damn but uh, yeah, that had some good insight on it. I'm gonna check it out this week, man. I think we should check it out. Maybe do a, or maybe do some thoughts on it. You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It'd be worth it. Um, I'm down. Let's do it. All right, one and two. We'll we'll do the whole package. How about that? I don't okay. think anybody's got do that it. out there. I don't think so either. And you know, something new. You know, something kind of stepping out of our uh, our comfort zone, our box really. A little bit, yeah, exactly. yeah. Because I ain't never heard these. I'm scared. I like I like thinking of Nas in, in my favorite time frame of his. Like life is good and still matic. You know that little yeah. time frame right there is my favorite. And I'm like, I don't I don't want to lose that. <laughs> well, <laughs> from what if Death Row East has 
you know, any bearing on what the album could sound like, I don't think it's going to be too bad. I think it's, you know, I yeah. think Nas has matured now. I think we've matured a little bit too. So, yeah. uh, well, I know you've been a fan of Nas. I'm just talking about my own ears. Yeah, man. To, to Nas and shit, but, but yeah, I bet it'll be good. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. We'll check it out. Hey, um, uh, you know, speaking of, uh, well, not really Nas, but before I forget on this NWA thing, DJ Yell has been yeah. out there promoting his book still. He's got some interviews going on out there. So uh, you might want to check those out on YouTube. You know, Be on the lookout for, uh, you know, DJ Yell's perspective on NWA, man, 33 years later. Yeah, uh, I, I've seen some of the of his promos on that, so uh, I'll definitely uh, be keeping an eye on that. Uh, I've heard a couple snippets from some interviews he's had online. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's cool that he's out there talking about stuff. Yeah, pretty cool, man. I heard, I heard he was asked about which NWA member got punched backstage. Or something like that. He didn't want to. He didn't want to answer it. <laughs> did he say? Did he say by the book? <laughs> no, he didn't say by the. It's, I guess it's not in the book. But, oh, um, that's crazy. Yeah. So I guess he didn't want to answer it. Ah, that's cool though. Oh wow. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's good shit. Good shit. Hearing his background and how he met people and stuff. Yeah. It'd be cool to to see what he's got to say. Oh yeah. Cool man. So what's on deck this week? Want to reveal it? All right. So yeah, this week we got uh, "I Want to Thank Me" by Snoop Dogg. It's a fairly new album. Came out in 2019. Um, one that I listened to when it first came out. I think I might have listened to it once, possibly twice, but not often. Um, I didn't really come back around to it. To, you know, we decided to do this podcast. Yeah. But uh pretty much a new album for for us to go through because i know you didn't really listen to it either i don't even know if you did listen to it for this uh nope but, uh, i did not okay so we're gonna get a fresh perspective on this album um to be fairly new to us so we don't have a whole lot of information on these tracks and stuff but uh you know we'll go through and we'll do our thing that's right yeah new new record 2019 probably our newest record that we've uh, kind of run yeah. through. Yeah, so, I thought about that today too, and I was like, I think this is the newest uh, that we've done on the podcast so yeah. far. And I'm looking at the track listing, and a couple of these guys, I'm like, who's that? You know, like, yep. I don't yep. know who that is. Um, so we got some, uh, yeah, some rappers from the new school on here, yeah. and even some producers that we're not used to seeing. When this record came out in 2019, did you, what did you, what what came out before this? Uh, before this, we had Bible of Love. We did like a, a gospel album. Um, mm. I never looked into that. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, I think he dropped two twenty. He he had this like section of his discography where he was coming out with like EPs and kind of little rink a dink stuff before his album. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, and it's hard to follow Snoop for me because I'm not a, a diehard fan of all of his stuff because he right. gets really experimental. And I'm just like, it takes a while to grow on me, some of this stuff. And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know about this like stuff. For me, for me, I would say that the album that came out before this would be Never Left. And that was in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he dropped "Make America Crip Again" that 220 album, um, and then the Bible of Love. Mm. But, Pretty uh, interesting. Yeah, guys, yeah. he's busy. Well, yeah, exactly. He is staying busy, so that's definitely a good thing there. But uh, yeah, I, I don't always get to, a chance to hear all of it because he's so experimental. Yeah. So, uh, just kind of going over it, you know, what what were your standouts and, and downfalls and, and kind of how you feeling about the album? Well, I'm going to start from the first track here, you know. Yeah. Uh, number one, 
it's a trippy beat, but it's cool. You know what you talking about? Now I'm talking yeah. about these these tracks. They're not all burned into my memory yet, but right. I, you know, I'm going off these notes here. Um, <clears throat> I think it's cool. What do you think about what you talking about? How the record started? I like, I like what you talking about, uh, or what you talking about. Uh, I thought it was a good way to kick the album off. It had good energy, good a good pace. Um, yeah. You know, when I heard it, I was excited. I was like, "Sweet man, so far so good." Yeah, for sure. It uh, it was simple and uh, you know to the point, so that was cool. Yeah. It was a cool beat too. Um, number two, so misinformed. I like that's probably one of my favorite tracks there because I like Slick Rick. I like hearing some new Slick Rick. He sounds fresh still. Like, come on, bro. Like, he still got it. And yeah. uh, knowing that uh, Snoop Dogg is a big fan of Slick Rick, uh, he's gonna take care of him, put him on a good track. So, yeah, that that added some extra, you know, a little extra speak to the track too. Is that you know we've known that Snoop has been influenced by Slick Rick and even done, you know, a tribute track on Doggy Style and yeah. I know he's got another unreleased one that is another tribute to Slick Rick. But yeah. yeah, yeah, I heard that. It was a cool track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was a dope track. Number three here, "Let Bygones Be Bygones." I thought it was cool. It was a kind of a a journal or a diary of some sort of uh, what happened, and he's kind of talking to Suge too at the same time, kind of catching him up and showing right. some, just showing some love here. I think it was good, man, and the beat was nice too. It was a good track. Yeah, I like that track too. It's got some cool history, you know. Um, just kind of what him and Suge have gone through. And yeah, I like Let Bygones Be Bygones. Yeah. One of the standouts. And then we got uh, One Blood, One Cuz featuring DJ Battle Cat. Mm-hmm. And uh, Battle Cat did some good shit on here, man. Like, he's, uh, he's actually <laughs> could be the standout star on this record. Um, mm-hmm. His style just keeps evolving. And it just never sounds tired and old. It's, uh, no, it, you know, if I was a producer, I'd be inspired, man. I'd be like, look, Aunt Banks, you can do this. Keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just within those last three tracks that we talked about, like the styles for those three were completely different, you know? So uh, definitely skills behind the boards right there for Battle Cat. And it was one of Snoop's deeper tracks on the record. Um, you know, yeah. got a little Nipsey Hustle uh, shout out there, you know, and then uh, just kind of goes into some deeper topics, um, you know, slaves and all that shit. So it was right. a cool track, man. I'm an old man, so I like these type of tracks, I guess. Um, shit, yeah. And then number five here, Countdown, Swiss Beats. What do you think about Countdown? I like that Countdown track, actually. Yeah, you know, that one took a while for it to to uh to sink in with me but it's a pretty cool track the countdown i don't know why but it reminds me of the sesame street countdown remember that (laughs) oh my god yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's what it reminded me of when i heard it i was like whoa this is crazy like i don't know took a while for it to uh catch on but it's pretty cool yeah countdown and it's one of the highest played tracks if not the highest played track on this yeah, record. Yeah, that's a little surprising to me too, but it's, yeah. it's cool. And then, uh, you know, moving on to I See Your Bullshit. Not one of his heaviest played tracks, but uh, I thought it, it had some cool sounds in it. And mm-hmm. uh, I could dig it, man, you know? Snoop, uh, you know, he, I'm, I'm finding that Snoop remains to be like a channel to the old school, you know? like yeah. these new artists that he can hang with um, and these new CDs he comes out with and tracks like he always gives you a window back like like a rear view mirror back onto what what inspired him and what he liked yeah and it's right He's up our alley because it was channeling our, yeah mm-hmm. it was it was our shit too you know yeah exactly so he's always channeling his past bringing that you know 90s hip hop yeah, still still uh, giving props and still referencing it. And yeah, definitely. 
Uh, mm -hmm. I like that track. I could do without the little jingle at the beginning and the end, but yeah, cool. yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, the next track, "Turn Me On," track seven, featuring Chris Brown, a jazzy fade beat. Yeah. What'd you mm -hmm. think about that? Um, you know, not my cup of tea. You know, "Turn Me On." I guess it, to me, it was you know their their uh, effort to try to get a radio track out there. I could hear that on the radio, you know, but not my cup of tea. So um, I appreciate the effort behind it and I get it. You know, Chris Brown killed it. Who killed it. Jazzy J killed it. But just yeah. not my style. Yeah, I, I agree. Not really my style. I can appreciate that Jazzy Faye can, um, you know, flip a beat uh, for the masses and then still go back to the hood and do something for Cam or something, you know. Right. Um, I think that's pretty dope of him. Uh, it's cool. Yeah, Blueface Hunted is another uh, another dope track. I think um, it's a dope beat. It's kind of odd, but it and it's like a new school beat. Um, it took a, mm -hmm. a little bit to grow on me, but uh, it's actually one of my favorites on here. I think uh, one of my favorites too. Uh, I really like the beat. Uh, every now and then, I'll go into the rabbit hole of like new west coast music you know i'm just trying to discover something new. You know? but this is the type of style of music that you start to hear now you know like some um, people like uh compton ab is another one of these new guys but like that seems to be like what the new west coast sound is evolving to yeah so um you know i i can appreciate hearing that new style and, and what snoop did with it so i, I like it blue face hunting is dope New Booty, what do you think about that? Number nine. <laughs> <laughs> New Booty's funny. Um, I didn't really know it was a Takashi 6 9 disc until uh, late yesterday, but yeah, um, yeah, man, it's, it's a comical track. It's funny. It is a comical it's track. It's catchy. <laughs> It is catchy. It gets stuck in your head. Use a new booty. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, let's see. Number 10, Take Me Away. The Wii track with Wiz Khalifa yeah. and Russ. Take Me Away. I dig it. You know, it's, yeah. like, it's not something I would listen to all the time, but, you know, in those, those times where you're just chilling, yeah. you take a puff of two. Yeah, I like yeah, that's cool. It's cool. I think I tried to skip it when I was doing my workout, so like this is not for me right now. But yeah, and to be honest, it, it, you know. the track didn't hit me right away either. You know, when I first heard it, I was like, I really didn't know. And you know, I'm a I'm a fan of Wiz, and Snoop and Wiz have done a lot of, of tracks together that I have on my playlist. So when I see those two working together, I get a little excited. But yeah. This one didn't hit me right away. It took a couple of listens before before it caught on. All right, cool. Number 11 here, Do It When I'm In It, Jermaine Dupree track. And then some other guys who do Spanish. Yeah, um, interesting track. Um, not really, you know, I guess the beat's okay. I don't mind the beat. It's just the whole track didn't really fit for me in the album. And I know he experiments a lot, but that one just kind of, you know, I, I wasn't sure how you're going to get these Spanish speaking people on there. Yeah. You know, one thing that uh, Snoop gets now is a lot of freedom to just do whatever he wants. I think he's yeah. let go of the idea that he can ever make another doggy style. So he just does whatever he wants at this point. Yeah. And no, really, that's kind of nice. That's a good point. Yeah. And really, it's just us who have to get over it. Like, we're not going to get another doggy style. That, like, you can't, you can't bring back that year and the, the uh, climate of Death Row Records and Snoop and you know the mindsets. It's impossible. No, but to recreate that is yeah, you're right, impossible. Yeah. So then we got uh, first place. That is one of my favorite tracks. I think it's a dope track. Yeah, I like First Place. That's a cool track. Very chill. Um, I like everything about it. The dude's voice. Um, what's his name? T Dot. T Dot Ill Dude. T Dot Ill Dude. Um, Something like that. Probably T Dot. Yeah. I just called him T Dot. 
T dot. Yeah, man. But, I, could, uh, I, could but do, yeah. I could do for more tracks like this. It's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, number 13, Focused. I thought it was a decent track. You know, it's pretty laid back, though. Like I said, this is probably more of the, the mind state Snoop is in these days, you know, just kind of chill. Yeah. Yeah, uh, kind of the same. I I don't know if I would bump that track too much, but not yeah. too bad. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. And then we got Rise to the Top. Um, this is one of my favorite tracks on here, and it's cool because it, it doesn't sound like a Swiss Beats track that much. Right. Um, it's a little different for him from what I'm used to. I mean, I don't have a big catalog of Swiss beats. I don't think so. Anyways, that was one of my standout tracks or one of my favorites. Anyways, what do you think about it? Yeah. The rise to the top was cool. I like the work that Swiss did on here. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of his work, yeah. um, or at least his beats anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I thought it was, it was good. And, Snoop has worked with him, you know, in the past, so it's cool to just see him sprinkled in. Yeah. You know, the stuff that he's still doing. You know, Swiss is, is, uh, is hit or miss for me. Um, I didn't really, yeah. I wasn't that impressed with this Bone Thugs effort. Um, some of the mm, tracks that he has yeah. with Nas, you know, I like them, but I think there's like, I don't know, I can't tell you how many tracks he did with Nas. But, um, yeah, I was gonna say, on Life is Good, he did a good. He had a good contribution on there, right? Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. Um, but, like you know, I keep an open mind. I'm sure we'll yeah. hear more of Swiss Beats uh, in the future. And then uh, we got uh, number 15 here with Nate Dog, Wintertime in June. Yeah, that was a pretty cool track. And not, you know, something different, like, you know, something Snoop can do and not very many others can do. But Wintertime in June was cool. It was a... Uh, Cool little laid back track. You got to hear Nate Dog on there, and you know, they're just telling tales about the ladies. Yeah, I thought it was a dope track. It was another chill track, and it's it was nice to hear some Nate Dog on here that I never heard. Um, it sounded uh, definitely like a, a track that was meant to leak or at least be on a record. Yeah, yeah it to me it sounded like maybe it was an unfinished Nate Dog song that finished for him yeah it was a dope track though and you know we got number 16 here which is only like a minute long eh, it's an interlude yeah whatever. that interlude yeah, yeah. but uh Nothing you didn't know didn't really contribute anything or take anything away from it. no I mean it's so long the, the entire record it wasn't like you were missing out on a track here so it's cool it's a pass on that main phone number 17 Rick Rock and Stressmatic I that thought one, the, I'm, not, the I'm main, having a hard time remembering what that one sounded like. Um, I think it was a, it was a, a pretty simple beat, main phone. Um, is this the one that we compared to the uh, Rhythm D beat he did on Blue Carpet? Is it? Okay. Yeah, maybe it is. Yeah. Yeah, um, you're right. Yep. Yep, you're right. Yeah, main phone. I like the beat. I thought, uh, you know, those type of beats, they're kind of a, uh, they're not too quick. They're pretty bouncy. They really lend themselves to Snoop and his style, you know. So, dope track, I thought. Yeah, it sounded, sounded like something Snoop has done in the past. And, you know, yeah, that's, it's, that's it's a safe good. track. That sounded like exactly what you would expect from Snoop. Yeah. And then we got 18. Uh, do you like is that do you like I do yeah do you like I do mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I like that track <laughs> I thought Superfly did a really good job of capturing that 90s sound yeah man it sounds uh, like some Bobby Brown or Paula Abdul or New they Kids on the Block like, <laughs> they could have fooled me and been like whoa look at this old school Snoop track did from the 90s and I would have been like whoa right but uh <laughs> but uh no, it was cool. Um, you know, I don't think it'll make any of my playlists or anything like that, but it's a cool track to hear. You know, if I hear it, I'm not going to skip it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's funny. Um, let's see. So that brings us up to number 19. I've been looking for you featuring Eric J. I, I thought it was okay. It's another laid back track, you know. 
Yeah. This album is kind of yeah. sprinkled with them, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say the majority of this album is laid back, but yeah, um, yeah, I thought you know, it was a decent track. Yeah. Then number twenty, I thought was a uh, it was a weird beat. It was kind of wild, mm-hmm. and like I said, man, it uh, it it gave me a little memory of like something Luke would do Luke. back in the day. Yeah, you know, just a simple cuss word or two that's being like repeated, almost like a chant. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It gave me a Luke vibe. Can't go wrong with yeah. that. Yeah, look at you. Yeah, so that was interesting. You know, he got some uh, Brazilian talent to come in and contribute to the music and the vocals. So. Um, yeah, not too bad. It was cool. Different beat for sure. Yeah. So, um, what track was that that we just talked about here? I I think I fucked little up. square. You bitch you. Okay. So, so we're little... going on next one is ventilation. Okay. Gotcha. All right, I'm on track then. I'm good, man. I'm good. This is a long CD. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Uh, number 21 here then ventilation. Um, so I hated this track at first, man. This was like, when I was listening, I was like, I was getting pissed. I was like, fuck man, this song doesn't do it for me. Like this record is weird. Um, yeah. but you know, it's not bad, you know, cause I, I get it. You know, the, the style is a little bit new school. Um, but hearing it, you know, after the second run, it wasn't as bad as I remembered. Um, it was pretty decent. So, what did you think about ventilation? Yeah. Ventilation, um, I liked it. I like the beat. I like the style. You know, it's kind of more like you know what the new West is doing. Yeah. Um, so, I haven't heard a lot of the music from the new West and shit like that. But like I said earlier, I try to you know always jump in the rabbit hole, hoping I'll find something. Yeah, um, you know the the but, guy. Yeah. He, the way that he rapped kind of reminds me of like young Jeezy. That would be the closest in my range of rappers that I know that do that type of style. You know, it's kind of arrogant and lazy. Um, that, yeah, young Jeezy. Dude was, yeah. Well, from what I've heard from young Jeezy, I should probably check out some more young Jeezy, but you know, I think I've heard him on like Ice Cube. Um, and I can't even remember. Con. Yeah. And I can't remember on the others maybe bun b um yeah i could kind of see what you're saying with the with the cadence of his voice and stuff like that yeah um the, the laziness but yeah i know i liked it it's you know it's a different style yeah but it's cute and then the final track here you know track number 22 with dj battle cat on the beat which is crazy mm-hmm. uh, i want to thank me battle cat good way to close out yeah. the album yeah and Battle Cat, like I said, is like the unsung hero on this record, man. He just like, he just comes with something different and fresh, like every time. And like I said, man, he, he just shows you that you can keep doing this for as long as you fucking want. Pretty dope. Yeah. Because he's been around for a it's, while. Um, Battle Cat's been around for a while, yeah. And this is Snoop's 17th album. So whoa. that's kind of crazy in itself. Yeah, that is crazy in itself. And good on Snoop, you know, not to take anything away from him. Like, he doesn't sound tired or, you know, like, he should retire. Like, he still sounds fresh. No. And he's killing yeah, the rounds, you know. At this point, it's you just follow him on for Instagram. Him. You, you, you know that the fire isn't going to be burning out anytime soon. Yeah. So, yeah, man, uh, all in all, uh, I thought it was a, it was a, it was a decent record here. Uh, it, like I said, and you said, you know, the first listen is rough because it seems pretty abstract. You kind of expect it from Snoop, though, that he can be abstract. So yeah. after, you know, well, the I think second that's listen, kind of go ahead. normal for Snoop. Al- I was going to say, I think that's kind of normal for Snoop albums, you know, at least within the last, you know, 10 years or so. Yeah. That uh, you're not sure what you're going to get. You don't know what to expect. He's always bringing something a little bit different. Yeah, and I think it might take the second listen for it to kind of sink in and get what he's shooting for and then give it some appreciation at that point. At least it did for me. Yeah. Um, the second and the third listen, 
is when I really started to pick up the tracks that I liked and they were more and more each time. Um, you know, at this point I can tell you which songs I don't like, of course, but I also know that I like way more than I did on my first listen, you know, so right. that's just how it is. You know, very rarely does a CD blow me away the first listen, you know, um, especially when it's new and different like this one it was pretty new and different. Mm -hmm. It was a crazy direction, but it's cool. I think that, yeah. Uh, and you know, yeah, it was different for us to, it, well, it was different for us to go over. Usually the albums we're going over, we know pretty well. Yeah. And we've already bumped them a shit ton in our past. Oh yeah. Um, but this, this was a different type of listen. So I, like I had to, like you said, you know, you kind of, take the album in with open arms or unbiased opinion and just try to take it in for what it is, you know? Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to do that with new music, but, um, because at least for, for me, I'm stuck in the nineties and the two thousands. Yeah, for sure. You know, and I love that style, you know, and that shit's going to be in my blood forever. Yeah. But, um, you know, the, the sound evolving, is always hard to get used to but see where it goes man you know i'm not um not hating on the direction or anything like that it's just a, a sound that i'm not used to hearing a lot yeah yeah same here man i'm uh i'm right. set in my ways it's tough but uh mm -hmm. you know yeah you give something a, a couple listens with an open mind it's all good i think that my favorite tracks on this record are going to be So Misinformed, uh, Rise to the Top, and Main Phone. Nice. I'm picking three. That's tough. <laughs> on this I record. like uh, What You Talking About. That one was dope. I yeah. like the Blue Face Hunted. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna go with the ventilation track. Nice. Those would be my standouts. What's your favorite beat? What is the best beat on this album? Mm, man, so I, I'm gonna put that probably between. Uh, now I gotta pick one. I'm gonna go with the first track. What you talking about? To me, it was it was different. It was up beat and some about it some about that beat sounded familiar to me i couldn't put my finger on it but yeah uh, there's a lot on this album that I, that I i myself can't put my finger on either you know it's like mm -hmm. this track is different i like it i can't tell you why not yet right but you know i only the first time i heard this album was a few days ago so <laughs> yeah yeah no, it, it's uh but that one right out of the gate I thought we were gonna get that type of album right out of the gate and I was like oh damn he's going hard at the beginning here yeah but uh Dunlap was the producer on that track and that was the only beat he did on the album crazy hmm. well, that's a good selection let's talk about yeah. my uh let's talk about the verse here my my favorite verse on this one I think is on uh One Blood that's the name of it, right? Okay. One Blood, One Cuz, Battle Cat yep. track, number four. Where uh, and really, he's just—I think this is still the the where he's giving props to Nip, where he's like says, "Man, I swear to God, Nip, you, you was the truth. Damn, how could this nigga do this? It's cause every neighborhood Jesus got a neighborhood Ju Judas." And I was like, "Damn, that's uh, that was probably my favorite verse on here." Um, you know, it's longer than that, of course. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But I yeah. thought that that track had some really deep lyrics. It's cool to hear Snoop like kind of dive into uh, somewhat spiritual topics, but also like political topics. And uh, even giving a little uh, shout out to Nipsey Hussle here. So all in all, yeah, I'd have to say that was my favorite uh, verse. So how do you score this record? Mm. Yeah, what do you give it? One well, to one to ten, I think, um, you know, 
All right. So this is without a lot of listening. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But uh, I'm going I'm to hit it with the seven. Um, I thought it was a solid effort. Um, you know, Snoop is always bringing something new to the table. So that always takes a little time to get used to. But I found myself liking the album a little bit more and more every time I listen to it. Um, you know, even after this podcast, I'll probably bump it a few more times. And, uh, you know, I'm probably going to go through and pick some songs off, throw them into the playlist. But uh, I think a, a seven, I'm going to give it a seven. Nice. You know, I agree with a lot what you said. I think uh, I will probably keep this album on rotation. Um, and like you said, pick the songs off. But uh, I would have to give it a seven as well. I'm going to give it seven new booties, actually. And, you know, <laughs> like I said, man, like you said, you take it with a grain of salt. Because I've heard the album right, only right. A, a handful of times. So right. you know, that's my score off of a, a few listens. Um, nice. But I, I will say that I think the album stays in my rotation. And uh, I'll probably grow another appreciation you know, I might uh, feel differently about it in 10 years. Who knows? But right. yeah, it was a crazy listen. It was crazy. So, yeah. You know, can I recommend it to someone? Yeah, I think I can. I'd be like, just check it out, man. Listen to it a couple times and let me know what you think, you know? Yeah, that would be my recommendation, too, you know? Just listen to it, you know, two, three times. Go from there. Yeah. I don't think the the one listen is just at least for Snoop Dogg. You know, you gotta you gotta give it a couple. Yeah, it was a cool record, man. So, yeah. Any uh any final words on this before we end the rap throwback episode? Um, you know, not too much. You know, the album's pretty cool. I like a lot of the Death Row references. You know, the stories with Suge and Death Row and. The, yeah, you know a lot of the uh, the window into the the '90s rap era, all of that's always cool. Um, other than that, you know. Um, yeah, man. Like I said, I, I think did. Snoop remains to be a channel to the past, which is great because he's still on top of his game. You know, still popular. But you can always refer to a Snoop record or something to give you a glimpse of what it was like and how he came up. And that was our era. Right. So I can appreciate it. So that's all I got, man. Yeah, that, that's, that, yeah same here, man. That's all I have. It's a dope record. You guys check it out. You know, give it a couple listens and uh, shit. If you're listening in to this podcast on the YouTube, give us a subscribe, share it. And uh, we'll see you next week, man. I think we're going to go over that NOS record. So that'll be another... Uh, That'll be another nice. different one, you know, for us. So we'll just keep yeah. doing it, man. Well, I think, you know, eventually that's what we're going to have to do, you know, is we're going to be hitting these albums that we don't listen to very often. And, uh, yeah. you know, I think eventually uh, the channel's going to get a lot more of this type of stuff. So it's yeah. fun going back and listening to all the shit we know, like the back of our hand. But Hell yeah. doing, you know, these albums that we don't listen to too often is pretty fun, too. Yeah, get a perspective from the OGs here, baby. How we That's doing right. it? Anyways, hey, subscribe to the podcast. We on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Apple Podcasts, whatever. Got our YouTube channel out there. Make sure you uh, check that out, man. We always got some fresh shit on there. And psh, I guess we out. This is uh, Megatron out. signing off of Cybertron here. Soundwave out, man. Little Rumble out. Out. Peace. Peace.